Welcome on in, folks, to another Triangle and Two. Uh, Mark Bergen, Luis Fernandez, and we have a very special uh, bowl uh, celebration version of Triangle and Two. A lot of bowl games to discuss and uh, unlock. Um, Mark, I want to get started, though, with I think what was the it's, – it's what everyone's been talking about this entire time, right? Uh, the college football playoff, which the Triangle teams were nowhere near. Um, but Florida State in the ACC getting left out. Um, for those of you who have not seen at this point, one is um, Michigan, two is Washington, three is Texas, four is Alabama. When that came down, Mark, on Sunday, what were your initial thoughts on Florida State being the odd man out? They got this wrong because they're validating that the games don't actually matter. And the example I'll point you to is Cardell Jones with Ohio State several seasons back. And if you don't know the name, Google it. They should know the name. Uh, although, although that I guess that was a lot longer ago than I realized. No, now, now I get that if you look at point spreads, Florida State would be a double-digit underdog. But like, just because their quarterback and backups get injured. Let's just invalidate every other position because the quarterback's all that matters at this point, Lewis. Left tackle doesn't matter. Your linebackers don't matter. Your cornerback or star skill position players, they don't matter. But if your quarterback's out, it, it like the moment Jordan Travis went out, Florida State gets eliminated from the CFP. Like, make that make sense. And look, again, if the point spreads... If they had made the CFP, they'd be a double-digit underdog. They're a double-digit underdog to Georgia in their bowl game, right? But this is a defense that hasn't allowed 30 points in a game this season. We're just going to ignore the other facets of football for a better primetime TV matchup and not to give these kids an opportunity when they've earned it versus Alabama and Texas getting in as one-loss schools. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I... I get I, – I think that Alabama and Texas are very deserving of being in the top four. Don't get me wrong. But, like, Florida State needs to be there. They're a power five, undefeated team. I mean, everything I would say at this point would just, you know, reflect what you have. I did, like, a little spiel on um, the news last night just kind of breaking it all down and how – Saw that and checked that out on WRLSportsFan.com, Lewis, because yes. I thought it was so, terrific. It's you got it's it's so frustrating. You know, I can't imagine if I was a Florida State fan or anything like that, or if I was involved with that Florida State team in general. Like, like you said, like okay, there the spread would be you know bigger if Florida State were to play in that game instead of Alabama or mm -hmm. you know Texas or wherever it would be. Okay, what's your point? Like Vegas doesn't decide who plays in the college football playoff. Vegas is not on the committee. And That's it, like, why you play the games. And look, let's take this a step further, Lewis. Let's take this a step further. Boo Corgan, who's on the committee and making this decision, mark this down. This is December the 4th, 2023. When NC State plays Florida State in future seasons, there's going to be a price to pay. I am telling oh, I you mean, this now. Sure. I am telling for, you for this For better now. or worse, it's not, it's not Boo Corgan's fault. He just happens to be the face of the, the college football committee. But yeah, no, I mean, it definitely, it's it's not great. The perception just, can be reality though, Lewis. And that's the perception that Florida State and Florida State fans will have as a result of this decision. But my my whole thing is, I think it just comes back to you in football. Like it, it is a lot harder to project how things will go in football just because of how many elements there are in the game, what's going on, all the different players. So, and it's, it's totally discrediting everything else that Florida State has done i mean they've won three games since uh, jordan travis's injury um you know they've beaten rivals with jordan without jordan travis um they, they had a third string true freshman quarterback in there and they dominated number 16 at the time louisville um 16 to 6 i mean it's just or it's just it's ridiculous like that's that to me is it's absurd and i i'm almost like at the point where i'm just like i'm done talking about it because it's just it's so frustrating it goes against all logic it goes against all precedent that the committee has had in the past and it's not going to matter next year because it's 12 teams okay great but i mean for this year it's it's awful it's super frustrating and 
Alabama's going to win the national championship now. I like that's what's going to end up happening, just because that's how that's how the law works. That's how that's how karmic you know things go down. It feels like. Like, but let's keep this just, rolling so because tough. clearly we're going to change other people's opinions on the internet and they're going to say, gee, yeah, Mark yeah. and Lewis were right. But Lewis, I, yeah. I agree with you. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, agreed. Um, let's go and turn now to the local teams, though, because what we saw on yeah. Sunday was because of this unexpected uh, change to the college football playoff, it caused a ripple effect uh, down the rest of the. Um, of the ACC, especially in the Bulls. And you saw people getting pushed down because now Florida State was added to the mix. There was a lot of confusion. Who's going to be going to what bowl? You had different bowls fighting over different teams. One of the places that all ended up falling out for NC State, the Pop-Tarts Bowl. NC State will be playing Kansas State in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Um, And Pop-Tarts Bowl, for for those that are unaware, um, I think more than anything else, I just want to get this out there because I know why you're smiling and laughing, Mark. Uh, they're going to have an actual Pop-Tart mascot at the game uh, that is edible. So um, that's great. That's just fantastic. Can't wait for after like a pick six. I hope the teams get to choose which flavor that the mascot is. Personally, I would go with the s'mores flavor, the brown cinnamon sugar. Just delightful. And can we heat the Pop-Tart too? So, they're going to need toaster so sidelines too. There needs to be the right preparation for this game. It's no, it, it, this is perfect college football. Um, you know, just you the chaotic nature of it. I, I really appreciate I like s'mores. I had s'mores the most, I think, growing up as a kid. Like yeah. I was just really into s'mores for some reason. I thought it was like an absolute delicacy when I was like when I was a little kid. <laughs> um, but I mean it, it, it kind of is. No, I know I like s'mores a lot. Um, some of the fruit flavors are really good too. I've actually never had wild berry before, and I so I need to I need to remedy that at some point. Um but this is exciting for NC State for a lot of different reasons. Number one, it's a top 25 matchup. Uh, NC State rose at, all the way up to number 18 in the college football playoff rankings. Um, and now they're placing, facing Kansas State, who is a good team, who you know took teams like Oklahoma State and uh, Texas to the brink. Um, they, they beat or they, they lost to Texas just by three points. So I think that's fascinating. State has a five-game winning streak going into this one. Um, and it's it's the history that is possible for NC State as well, Mark. Yes, and 10-win season, it would only be the second time NC State, if they win, that they've gotten to 10 wins. Got to go back to 2002, Chuck Amato, when the Wolfpack go 11-3. and three. So a very big deal considering earlier this year, we were laughing at NC State and Dave Doran and the state of the program and going from Brennan Armstrong to MJ Morris. And now you have the opportunity to salvage your season and to get to 10 wins. That's a really big deal considering you've only done this one other time in the history of the entire program. And it's a Kansas state team that plays a similar style of football in the sense that like they've lost games that they probably weren't expected to win, but they beat everyone that they're supposed to. And I think it's very interesting, too, that you leave off my alma mater because if not for a 61-yard field goal, they'd have knocked off Missouri on the That's road right. as well. That's right, 61-yard. I, no, I remember that kick, and and being that was just ridiculous because it's college kickers. Um, yeah, and Missouri's in a New Year's Six Bowl, right? Uh, they're playing Ohio State in the oh. Cotton Bowl, so just ahead of New Year's Eve. And, yeah, got their work cut out for them against the Buckeyes, no doubt. That's fun. Um, no, I know it's, I really, I, I've said it for the past like five weeks, essentially, but I, I don't think that you can give enough credit to Dave Doran and his coaching staff. Let me, let me say one thing too, with this offense, Lewis, I, I got to hop in here. Cause I don't yeah. think we've given this guy enough credit on NC state. We can talk about Peyton Wilson a lot, but Casey Concepcion on the oh. offensive side yeah. of the ball, and they're going to hang on to him and give him enough NIL money and all of that. Swiss Army knife for the Wolfpack offense, and he's helped revitalize and get yeah. this group to uh, regroup, if you will. And it's funny because we have a lot of NC State alum in the WRL newsroom, Lewis. And it's like, hmm, like this kid's going to be really good as a sophomore or junior. Let, let's scratch that from the record. He's really good right now. Yeah, it, he's I mean, a very, very good year. player right now. Yeah, absolutely. No, he's he's um he he is his ability to be used everywhere. Um, it's it's somewhat somewhat reminiscent, different body size, different kind of talent, I guess, and different different types of of ways they play. But it's 
somewhat reminiscent to how Debo Samuel, you know, has been and was used by the 49ers before they got Christian Caffrey, where he's just kind of all over the place. You can really do a lot with him. His speed is phenomenal. Um, the, the one thing that's going to be interesting about this, too, when you look at Kansas State is they have an, a tendency to give up a lot of rushing yards. Um, I went back to uh, looking at the past few games, right? So as they went in their final four games of the season, they went two and two. Um, they, they played, you know, Texas, for example, in those two games. But when you go back to um, how opponents did against them over the course of those last four games, 230 yards rushing, 234 yards rushing, 258 yards rushing. So you can run on Kansas State. So it's going to be interesting to see if that translates for uh, the Wolfpack. And they are the underdogs in this game. Last time I saw the, with the spread. So um, it, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what, what this looks like for State. And I want to see Dave Dorn after this game, if the Wolfpack are victorious, how a Pop-Tart goes down with a nice bourbon after a Wolfpack win. We will see, Lewis. I can't wait for this matchup. The Pop-Tart Bowl, the inaugural Pop-Tart Bowl, edible mascot on the sidelines. These stories write themselves. Let's keep this rolling, though. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we go from uh, North Carolina State to UNC, uh, who – will be playing West Virginia in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Now, this is the second year in a row that a local triangle team has been in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. NC State was in the Duke's Mayo Bowl last year. Um, and, you know, UNC was just recently in the Duke's Mayo Bowl as well. Uh, they lost pretty badly to South Carolina, I believe, was that one. Um, so, but this is not exactly where UNC expected their season to go. Uh, I think that the expectations were a little bit higher. But, you know, you have an opportunity to win a game uh, against the Power 5 opponent. Uh, in the postseason uh, in North Carolina. There is some interesting storylines here. What what uh, are you paying the most attention to, Mark? A year ago, we were robbed when NC State didn't get it done in the Duke's Mayo Bowl to see Dave Dorn doused in Mayo. And nothing would give me more delight than to see Mac Brown at the age of 72 slathered in mayonnaise after a oh. Tar Heels win. I, I'm excited for it too, but don't don't use the word slathered when we're talking about the Mayo Bowl. All right, man. That I guess it gives me. I don't I don't know how I feel about that. I, I get bad vibes. I, now, ugh. I would be surprised if Drake May plays in this game. I just don't think there's yeah. any upside in him playing. It then goes to okay, Tez Walker and some of the other players on North Carolina's roster with the potential of going to the NFL. Now. Okay, for the players that are going to play, O'Marion Hampton, he's been the star of the show all season, all, all season long in terms of running the ball. His production, he's close to breaking some North Carolina records, so that's at stake. But this is going to be a showcase game for him, in my opinion, for could he potentially be one of the top backs in the 2025 draft? It'll also be British Brooks last time suiting up for the Tar Heels as well. So the North Carolina running game, we all focus on Drake May and Tez Walker. It's been the ground game that's really been the driving force of this offense this season. I think they get back to that in that, okay, we're going to get an extended look with quarterback Connor Harrell stepping in. Mac Brown has says this every single time there's a news conference where he gets asked about Drake May, and it's like, well, Harrell's the next guy up to where he's one play away from playing significant playing time. And is he the guy for next season – when you've got Max Johnson coming in as a transfer from Texas A&M and LSU. So he's going to have his opportunity in this game to showcase what you can do in a real live game situation with high stakes in a bowl game to say, are you the Tar Heels quarterback for the 2024 season? Yeah. And so with, yeah, with the whole Drake May stuff, it's still haven't heard like one way or another, like for sure official, um, uh, Caleb Williams did say that he will not be playing or, or Lincoln Riley said that Caleb Williams will not be playing mm -hmm. in the holiday bowl for USC. So that's something to keep in mind. What, what's interesting is because this one's in Charlotte, right? I mean, obviously you have the North Carolina ties in general, but there are a mm -hmm. lot of players that are from Charlotte. So if, if someone is on yeah. the verge saying, okay, do I sit out? Do I transfer? What is it? Maybe this is something that kind of like, you know, changes their mind a little bit. I know Tez Walker, so much of his story early on in the season was, you know, getting a chance to play in front of his grandmother, in front of his family, which he's been able to do, but he's from the Charlotte area. So that would make it um, kind of all the more sweeter. Uh, Drake May's family being from the Charlotte area as well. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still waiting to hear the official word that Drake May will not play, but I do agree. If, if he does not play, then this will be a prime opportunity for someone like Connor Harrell to, 
you know, get a leg up on that quarterback competition next year. I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen, but you know, it, it's an opportunity for him to prove it. Marion Hampton, a couple of things to watch. Those records you're talking about, I believe it's two touchdowns is what he needs to become second all time uh, in uh, UNC for single season rushing touchdowns. He's trailing um, Elijah Hood right now, I believe. And then he, the he only had like 28 yards against NC State at the tail end of the the season against um, in the final regular season game, and so that kind of threw him off the pace. If you were to get, I think it's 290 something yards in this one, he would pass Don McCauley um, to become the single season all time leading rusher for UNC. So it would require something kind of you know Herculean on on his front. But if Drake May doesn't play, maybe that's what they do. They really lean on that running game. Uh, I don't know. It's it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this unfolds. Um, and with all of these, Mark, too, it's, we, we've seen it so much. The transfer portal has been active. It's been busy. So I think trying to assess what these bowl games are going to be like so few weeks ahead of time is almost – it's more challenging because you don't know what the roster is going to look like. You don't yeah. know who's going to be playing. It's, so it's going to be – I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on yes, to yes. Uh, Duke? Final thought here in this matchup is that North Carolina want to end its season in Charlotte, but want to end the regular season in Charlotte, not the postseason. Because it's mm-hmm. like start of the season in Charlotte against South Carolina, big win over an SEC school. And it's like, it's kind of bittersweet. But again, if we get to see Mac Brown in mayonnaise, it, 72 years old, it would be wonderful. It would be it wonderful. Feels like a, it feels like a monkey's paw type thing where it's like, oh, uh, North Carolina's like, I want to play in Charlotte in December. Yeah, we got it. Just a few weeks later and not not in the ACC yeah. championship game. Um, all right, so let's wrap this up with the Birmingham Bowl. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about how all of the ACC matchups unfolded, right, because of all the chaos that happened with Florida State not getting into the CFP, I don't know if there were any other team more impacted by this than Duke because essentially what happened was Duke was initially reports, uh, Big 12 even putting it out there, that Duke was going to be playing in the Gasparilla Bowl against UCF. In Tampa, Florida. In Tampa, Florida. For Duke fans, that sounds familiar, right? Because Duke and UCF played each other in the Military Bowl last year. So you're seeing that, yeah, this is a little weird. And then what essentially happens is the ACC takes Georgia Tech and Duke and flips them. So that Duke is now playing in the Birmingham Bowl and Georgia Tech is now playing in the Gasparilla Bowl. So that's how we get to this point with Duke playing in the Birmingham Bowl, the 76 Birmingham Bowl, I think is what it officially is. Um, and they're playing the Sun Belt champion, Troy. Back to back Sun Belt champions. Yeah. As they, well, they, Lewis. They, they took care of business against App State uh, mm-hmm. this past weekend. It's this is tough. For the Blue Devils. I you mentioned earlier of moving parts, players transferring. This game is so hard to project for me for Duke because I didn't expect Riley Leonard to be back or to play in this one, but it's like, okay, is Grayson Loftus gonna continue on? Uh the backup Henry, Henry Bellin the fourth, Henry Bielan the fourth. Is he gonna play due to an upper body injury? He's missed several games. Yeah. Duke's got an interim coach. Like, it's like, I just don't know what to expect. Now, what I will say is this, Lewis, and this might not be popular among Blue Devils fans, but I'm going to say this because this is just okay. my truth. We're, we're, I think hiring, truth. hiring the correct replacement for Mike Elko in quickly is a lot more important than winning this bowl game. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Because, again, there are so many moving parts which players are going to potentially leave. Like, we saw players from A&M leave A&M and come to Durham, right? Mm -hmm. Could the same thing happen? Players leave Durham and go back to A&M now that Elko's there and Elko's gone. It's just like, I, in terms of projecting what this game will be for Duke, because you don't have a head coach, because your quarterback's gone, it's just like... I, I, I kind of just the shrug emoji, Lewis. It's like, I, I, I'm going to be honest here. It's like, I'm yeah, trying no. to provide insight and feedback for people who take the time to listen or to watch us. And it's just like, it, 
you, you did a great job in your bowl guide where it's like all these question marks with this game of, okay, how soon do you hire a new head coach? Because transfer portals open now. How does the departure impact Duke? Who are we seeing at quarterback in this game? And so it's just like, yeah. there, there are more questions than answers is the point that I'm trying to make. No, I know. Agreed. Cause like, I mean, my, my expectation is that Duke has a head coach well before this bowl, right? Like if I'm, I would if hope. I'm the blue devils, I, I, I would want a head coach as soon as possible. Um, the, the, tr- and don't even get me started on the, the transfer portal and the early signing period and all that stuff being when it is, I feel like an adjustment needs to be made with this calendar. Cause it's just, it's making all of this just impossible for college football, especially at this time of the year. Um, but you know, I, you, you got to figure out what that situation is going to be like. And what inevitably happens when a new coach is announced is then players start making decisions. People enter the transfer portal. People are going to try and come in. Like, you know, you're going to make some adjustments with coaches, coaching staff and all of that. So it's the whole Duke situation right now just feels so fluid. Um, so all, all I know is that the blue devils are going to get extra practices because of bowl game. Right. And so that gives you the opportunity to really find out and lean in on who's going to be here for the long term for Duke. Um, you know, I, I think the matchup against Troy is going to be difficult. They Troy has won, I think it's nine games in a row. Um, hold on, I'll pull it up right now. So I've, I've got it. I've got it in my notes. Back to back Sun Belt champions. Yeah, and they, they won. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. They're they. they it's nine games in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, excuse me. No, 10 games in a row. Yeah. Live they, math they, on a podcast. Have mercy on us. People. I know. Right. It's so I'm, I'm just looking at a row of W's. And I'm like, ah, that looks like nine. Um, They beat Stephen F. Austin to start the year. And then they lost at Kansas state. And then they almost beat James Madison. 16 to 14 was the final score there. And they've rattled off 10 wins in a row. So this is a very good team. Team, it's a very hot team. Um, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with Duke. I do know that they are the underdogs in this one. They're not favored in this one, but I also think that's not. You know, you got to give some credit to people like uh, Grayson Loftus. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm just going to work under the assumption that Grayson Loftus will start this one. No, like information or something like that telling me that. Just Henry Beelan's shoulder injury has has been you know pretty difficult for him to to manage through. Um, you know, if he was healthy, he'd be playing. Um, so I, I don't know. It's it's going to be really interesting to see how this one unfolds. Um, I'm almost more intrigued in what the time to- what what happens with Duke between December fourth when we're recording right now and the bowl game starting on December twenty third than I am with what happens during the actual bowl game. Take it outside of this bowl game in terms of what you're looking forward to if you're a Duke fan, who you hire as a new head coach, and then where Riley Leonard ends up. I've heard Notre Dame. Is the odds on favorite where it's like, oh, they get North Carolina quarterbacks and Sam Hartman and potentially Riley Leonard back to back years. But like between now and this game, and honestly, I think those storylines might take precedent over what happens in this game. So that's what's to come if you're a Duke Blue Devils fan. Yeah. And I think, too, last thing I'll say about this is before Mike Elko left, and you know, you can have a lot of conversations about how Mike Elko left. I don't know if I've actually seen a goodbye yet to Duke. If you have, and you're watching this or listening to this, please send it to me. Let me know. Cause I don't, I don't think I've seen one from him yet. Um, but one thing he said was that the, the blue devils, he, he really knew the heart of this team. They continue to fight. They never gave up. They were incredibly resilient, all of that stuff. So part of me, what, what I'll be intrigued with this one too is, you know, how does losing your head coach impact this team? Do they continue to have that fight and that resiliency? I tend to lean towards that, that they will. But it's going to be, there There are a lot of things going on with Duke outside of that football team. Um, what's actually happening on the field? How does that translate? Um, either way, we'll find out uh, in a couple of days and before Christmas. when they The, play AD, the AD Nina King and then the replacement, the interim. Trooper Taylor, Lewis, they've got their work cut out from them. That's just why this is why you make the big bucks in those positions. It it does. It does. Um, I'm excited to see, though, what Duke does. I think you'll learn a lot about that team for sure. Um, all right. So there we did. There we go. We went through the local teams, where they're going, what they're playing, what the situation is like. Um, Mark, any anything else you want to add or plug here before we say goodbye? Yes, I am putting together a guide for all 43 bowl games. 
So look for that later this week on WRALsportsfan.com. Reason to watch every single game. It can go from, say, the Battle of Mikes with Mike Gundy and Mike Elko going head-to-head in their matchup. Football in Paradise in Honolulu, Hawaii, or all the way in Boise, Idaho, where the field is blue and the winning team dumps French fries on its winning coach. Bowl season is here. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome, and it's a great way to ring in the holiday season as well, Lewis. Yes. Uh, make sure to check that out. Um, on my end, uh, not really too much more to plug. Just, uh, I guess, a couple of news and notes. Um uh, UNC basketball is now up to number nine in the AP poll. Uh, NC State uh, women's basketball is now up to number three. Uh, so they're right up there with, you know, the the greats. Um, it's it's really interesting to see how their season continues to unfold. Um, trying to think of anything else. Apologies if there are other news and notes here. Um, high school football championships coming up. There's, there's a lot going on, uh, even though we're getting to a more quiet month of the sports calendar year. Um, Happy, happy to to begin into the bowl season, though, Mark. It's definitely one of my favorite times of the year. Absolutely, Lewis, you're the absolute best. Let's wrap this baby up. No, you are, Mark. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for for listening and watching, and check out uh, all of our shows on 999 The Fans YouTube page on WRLSportsFan.com. Uh, make sure you listen wherever you get your podcasts and all that stuff. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, for listening. We will see you next week.